Hi, Steve. Keith. Steve, obviously there's been a club statement out in the last hour confirming that you'll be in charge on Sunday for your 1,000th your game. After everything that's been said this week, how much of a, a relief is that to you? Well, all week, all week, the ability of having the experience that I've had over the last 20 odd years or whatever it is, um, is to just get about, do but your job, do as best you possibly can until you hear different. And after a brief 10 minute conversation with the new owners, where we talked about the team and we talked about injuries and we talked about the training ground and we talked about, it was very, very informal. They just said, carry on until, you know, I'll carry on until I hear otherwise. And that's what I've done. So um, that's what we've been managed to do. I have to say the players have trained magnificently well and we're all looking forward to Sunday now and you know, let's hope we can get a result. Obviously, Steve, there's been so much um, speculation and, and, and uncertainty and I think you've said before that you've got very thick skin but I think even by previous standards there's been a lot to, a lot to deal with this week. Well, I hope you are feeling the heat from your bosses because it hasn't happened, has it, of what you all wanted? So let's hope you're getting a bit of stick from your the people who put you in charge of whatever department you do. So, as I've said many, many times, when you're going to manage in the Premier League, you have to take what's coming your way and have to the, have to have the ability to see the job through, which is train the players as best they can, prepare them as best they can, and that's all I've, I've concentrated on and have done over the last week or so. Sorry, Steve, just to clarify, it wasn't a case of anyone, certainly at Sky or I guess anywhere else, wanting anything to happen. We're, we're purely just going on information that we're, we're being told. Well, the information was wrong, wasn't it? So, you haven't done your job properly. Hmm. Um, you, you said that you met with Amanda and Merdad on, on, on Monday. Was it, was it just fairly informal or was, anything, yes. was there any discussions regarding your future at all? There was no discussions on me whatsoever. And... There's certain discussions what need to be private, but it was all about uh, the team, injuries, how are we looking for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. It was very, very informal. And I have to say, they were very, very good people. And um, and it was good to see them and, and good to see them around the training room. Let's, let's, not, let's not forget here, yeah, it's a great thing what's happened for the club and the city. And if it takes this great club forward, then great. Has what's happened this week, Steve, kind of soured what should be a, a really big day for you for your 1,000th match not, in charge? <clears throat> Keith, it's not It's not about me, a 1,000th game. I played 950 times. I've won the domestically everything there is to win. So there comes a stage where it's not about me. It's about the club going forward, the team, and more importantly, getting a result on Sunday because there's times this season I think we've played very well. So we need a we need a win and a victory to get us to get us moving up the table. Just finally for me, Steve, are you hopeful that that you can sort of convince the new owners that you can be part of this moving forward? Well, I'll have a crack. I'll I'll try my utmost, and if they say fit, then great. That's who wouldn't want this opportunity now? Any manager would love this opportunity um, and love to be sitting in my chair. So I'll make a fist of it. I'll try my utmost. And, and as always, try my best, which is best for the club. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Um, Adam Cottier, Premier League Productions. Hi, Steve. Um, after everything that's happened this week, what would your message to the fans be ahead of the game this weekend? Well, I know it'll be some ridiculous atmosphere, which we're all looking forward to. And like always, for me, is... is um, Wherever they think of me, the most important thing for them is to see their team win a game. And I know they'll be right behind the team in an atmosphere which I doubt we've witnessed at St James's Park for a long, long time. So I'm hoping that the team, which have trained really well all week, been really, really focused on the job in hand, and I hope, really hope we can go and perform and, and win the match. Yeah, what's it been like preparing for this match on the training? Well, I'm not going to lie, it's not, it's not been easy. But as I've said, I've been around the block a long, long time. And my job from day one was focus on the training session every day. How are you going to prepare the team? How to prepare my staff as well to cope with what's gone on? 
And um, as I said, the most important thing, the players have trained very, very well all week, which is uh, which was good to see. How has everything impacted on you personally this week, Steve? It's not about me personally. I've tried to keep me respect and me dignity, which has probably served me well over the last 20 odd years. <clears throat> and that'll, that'll remain. Um, it's um, been difficult, of course, you know, but as I said, I hope you guys are getting a slap now for your bosses to say that you haven't done your job. Whoever your source was, whoever it was who's feeding you, didn't get it right. So uh, I hope you're feeling a bit of heat. Just finally on on, on Tottenham, what are you, what's your assessment of, of their season so far and what challenge will you face on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, look, Spurs are, as always in the Premier League, especially club like Spurs, I had me, I had me first win against them as Newcastle manager a couple of years ago. Um, so let's hope we can have a repeat of that. They've got good players, huh? They're really, really good players. So it's going to be difficult, but I'm quietly confident and we can get a result. Thank you, Adam. And Alistair McGowan, BBC Sport. Hi, Steve. Alistair. Can I just confirm, when did you learn that you were going to be in charge for Tottenham? Um, when was that confirmed? I was told last week to carry on as normal, last Monday. So until I heard anything different, and that's been the case. So no matter what you guys have been writing and saying, was to carry on, and I said no problem. I will carry on to the best of my ability. Would you have like obviously seen a statement today? Would you have liked that reassurance to come sooner? I don't think I needed an assurance. I've seen people who are very, very good people give me, a, you know, a, sitting in front of me to carry on as business as usual. I don't need a statement. Um, do you, you mentioned there about sort of an opportunity to win the new owners over? Is that utmost in your mind? Well, look, who do you wouldn't, feel like who you've wouldn't, got that opportunity? Who wouldn't want to try? I'm not going to give up the, the, uh, the hope of it, you know? Who wouldn't want this job now going forward, the way it is, the way it looks in the future? Who wouldn't want the opportunity to manage Newcastle? Certainly I would. And I'm sure there's hundreds of who would want to do the same thing. It's exciting times, exciting times ahead for the club, that's for sure. And if you were given that opportunity and you did continue, do you have any reservations about the links to Saudi Arabia and everything that's involved with human rights and the like? Look, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure people will look into that. That's for politicians and all the rest of it to decide on that. Um, it's a great thing for the club of Newcastle and, and for me, the city too. I've seen the transformation in Manchester and what it's not just for the football club, but for the city too. And I hope, I hope for the area and for the people and the supporters that it's the exciting times ahead and um, it, they've been given this opportunity. Okay, good luck for the game. Thank you. Thanks, Alistair. Nisha Joshi, BBC Good North. Hi, Steve. I know you've said that you know it isn't about you on Sunday, but bearing in mind it is this thousandth game as a manager and this cloud of uncertainty that still hangs, would it? What would it mean to get a result against Tottenham? Well, I keep saying take me out the equation because you know a thousand games doesn't happen to many, but it really is about that. Can we go and get a? Can we go and put in a performance? As I've said many times over the interviews now, the, the players have trained really well. I think they know what Sunday's going to be. And that's the most important thing. I think we've been close many, many times um, this season that haven't been able to get over the line. So let's hope we can put on a performance that gets us our first three points. You talked about that informal conversation that you had. Um, and. I mean, what, what do you think fans can expect? And like you've said, you're a fan of this football club. What do you think the next few months might bring to the club? Well, I think we're all going to have to be patient. It's not going to just happen and transform overnight. You know, these things take time. But I think what we're all excited about is now the opportunity to go and, and mix with the best in the Premier League, which we haven't been doing for a number of years now. You know, so to go and propel yourself amongst the elite of this, 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 uh, the Premier League, 
is the thing that we all look we all look forward to and even me as a supporter look forward to the to, to everything what's going to happen over the next few years How do I reflect on it? Look, I've had two years. He's given me the opportunity to manage this club. Been difficult, no doubt about that. I think we all understand that. I understood it very, very quickly that it's going to be difficult because, you know, we want Newcastle to be at the top end of the division, not at the bottom end. And unfortunately, we've been in the bottom half of the division um, more in the last ten years. And you know, so to improve on that is is the key to it. Um, and I let other people judge that. For me, he's given me the opportunity to manage this club, so I'll always thank him for that. As, as a local lad, <clears throat> managing Newcastle United is a, is a dream job for you. But when you have had, you know, abuse at times from fans, and what must have been this must have been a difficult week. Has any of the gloss been taken off? Look, I've said many, many times. You know, I've, it's a thousand games. I've played nine fifty as a nine hundred fifty, or I think as a as a player. I've been involved forty three years on the trot since I was a kid. You know, um, I've won every domestic medal there is, a few times over. Um, what you cry for is a little bit of respect at times, just a little bit of respect at times, and have a bit of dignity about you. And um, no matter how difficult it, it's become or what it is, that's what I've tried to put in place. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Nisha. Simon O'Rourke, ITB Time Tees. Hi, Steve. Um, I was speaking to Peter Kirkley at Walls End Boys Club this wow. morning, and he and they are very proud of the career that you have gone on to make for yourself. You've said the numbers yourself there. Are you proud of it? Yeah, extremely. When I look back on it, when I've got my slippers on, I'd like to thank somebody like Peter who had faith in me when I was a kid where everybody else didn't have much faith in me. He eventually you know, took me to Burnley where I got turned away and he took me to Gillingham with his relationship with the Gillingham people. And that's how I ended up with Gillingham with Peter Kirkley who ran Walls End Boys Club and um, that was the start of it. So to come and have the journey I've had, you know, it started with Peter and I've always, always thanked him. Um, yeah, happy, happy days. Uh, only one more. Um, given the events of the week, if you were to win this match on Sunday, would you quite enjoy sort of shoving that back in a few people's faces? <laughs> well, I'm going to be brutally honest and say yes, of course I would. <laughs> um, I just want to win the match, yeah? I know what kind of atmosphere it's going to be. I know how delighted the, 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 the support has been and rightly so, for the excitement, hopefully, what lies ahead. Hopefully, I can get with started and, uh, and get a result which everybody would, would enjoy. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. If you have a question, can you use the raise hand function, please? And we'll go to Simon Bird at the mirror first. Hi, Simon. Hi, Steve. Simon. Well, obviously, you're not the, the first employee of a Saudi regime to want journalists to get a bit of heat. Um, but can I ask you... Are you um, simply hanging out for your compensation at the minute? Oh, that's a really awful question to start with, Simon. You know, people with compensations and all the rest of it, it's not all about money with me. Not at all. I want to be the manager of Newcastle. That's not going to change. Who wouldn't want to be, especially now? Who wouldn't want to be? So all I'm trying to do is focus on Sunday, get a result, see what happens after that. Uh, David Spellman, PA. Hi, Steve. Um, Steve, double question, really. Firstly, are you likely to have anyone back? And secondly, you've you've scrapped for everything you've you've got throughout your career. It sounds like you're you're ready for another scrap. I'll never give up that. That's something in me. Maybe it could be in brawn and bred here. I wasn't going down the shipyards, that's for sure. So that's still in me. Um, your second question was what, Damien? What was your second one? first question was just about injuries. Injuries. About Sorry. Um, the only one's not uh, made it is De Bragger and Dummett. So the, the, the captain's fit. John Joe Shelby's fit. Callum Wilson's fit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Chris Woff, The Athletic. Hi, Steve. Uh, in terms of over the course of, of the last week or so, have you 
considered your own position at all? Obviously, you, you said that you had those conversations on Monday. Where you feel but why should I, why should I, Chris, why should I don't have to have the conversation with them on Monday? They made it br- br- uh, you know, clear to me. Carry on. Carry on as best you can. No problem. I will do. Thank you very much. Before that stage, were you considering your future at all? Were you thinking that you were going to go? I considered my future last summer when we finished 12th after finishing 13th the season before. That's when I had a look at it. Um, but I decided to, to crack on. Uh, Lee Ryder, the Chronicle. Steve, uh, just on the, the mood of the players uh, at the Wolves, you would have had to lift the players anyway. What, what has it been like this week as, as manager in trying to, to motivate the group? Or are they as excited as the supporters are? I think they're excited like everybody else is, is what the supporters are. They realise there's been a monumental change, yeah? And um, and though I'm sure the players will want to be and prove that they want to be part of it and take the club to a better place. So, you know, there's been a determination on the training all week. There's been that, that uh, bristle, if that's the right word, but certainly... Certainly, there's been a change in the and the whole atmosphere everywhere. So, um, you know, and, and if they've got anything about them, which I'm sure they have, then they'll want to be part of what Newcastle is going forward, and that's the challenge to them too. Thanks, Lee. Luke Edwards, Telegraph. Good afternoon, Steve. Luke. Um, it's not just you. I mean, you're all when a new owner comes in, a new regime, you're all effectively playing for your future. You're managing for your future. The players are playing for your future. Should they be more motivated, this group of players, than ever for the challenge they've got to prove that they should be part of the future? Of course, that's part of change and part of you know getting better. You know, so they've got to be, yeah, making sure that they want to be part of the of Newcastle going forward, which is to going to be hopefully competing at the top end of the table rather than just staying in the division. And unfortunately, we've been in that situation of staying in the division for far too long as a club of this size and the supporters, they want to see their club pushing the other way. So, but I stress, Luke, that, you know, it can't just happen overnight. You know, you've just got to put some building blocks in place and, uh, and make sure that you do things properly, which I'm sure the new owners will do. And Ian Lady, the Daily Mail. Hi, Steve. Um, I've um, listened to what you've been saying and things you've said previously. It's clear that you you believe that some of the things that are said about you are, are personal and you talk about trying to keep your dignity and your self-respect, but ultimately, is, is the greatest threat to you not simply what is always the greatest threat to a manager, which is results and performances, which, when you look at them, probably, yeah. aren't, probably aren't up to scratch. This Ian, Ian, I, I, per, I, I absolutely get that. If, if you're in the bottom six or seven, you haven't won all season, whether you're a manager in Newcastle or Watford or Crystal Palace, then, you know, very, very quickly now, you, you become, what I say, under the pump. We can all accept that. Results haven't been good enough. When it becomes personal... Then you'd just cry out for a bit of respect, huh? So I understand at the minute, though, the results haven't been good enough. So I take that on the chin. You're right. Absolutely 100% right. And that goes for all managers, whether what league you're in. We all know the job. If you don't get the results, unfortunately, you know, you're going to become criticised. And, and, uh, and, and that's the nature of the beast. I'm going to take two more, ladies and gents. First up, Scott Wilson from the Northern Echo. Hi Steve, um, Steve you say you've had a, a kind of brief chat with the new owners this week, regardless of, of what happens to yourself moving forward, do you hope that you get the chance to, to sit down with them and have a kind of more detailed discussion and say look, this is what I think's right about Newcastle at the minute, this is what I think's wrong, this is what I think needs change and this is what the priority is because you know, you've been in amongst it for the last two years, you probably know that better than anyone really. Well if they seek me advice on it, of course, I've got no problem with that. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. You know, they're very, very decent people, as I've said. Um, we should be all be excited of what's coming. Um, 
and um, it's just the start of it. So if they want my advice, and as I said, I've been in it a long, long time, then I hope that I can point them in the right direction and help them along the process, which is obviously difficult because football, football is like no other. It's like no other business where, you know, we've got to get ready for Sunday and then next week we prepare again. You know, it becomes, uh, they come thick and fast the game. So if they seek me advice, I'll sh I definitely give it to them. Why, why shouldn't I? Thank you, Scott. And last up, Miles Stafford, for Chiles Gazette. Hi, Steve. You, you said you considered your future in the in the summer. That's, I don't think that's something you, you've revealed before. Can you talk about what was your thought process and why you did consider your future at the time? Well, I thought I'd, after finishing 12th and 13th and matching the previous uh, manager, then was, can I take it forward? Can I get any better than this? How do I take the club forward? Was the questions I asked myself. But then I thought of me staff and I thought of everybody around and this, that and the other and thought, well, do you know what it is? For how difficult it is, it's still a great job. And you won a 20 in the Premier League and I've walked, I've walked before in the Premier League club and um, I decided to, to carry on. Okay, thank you for your time, everybody. Just a reminder that this is embargoed until 2.15pm and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you.